Hello reviewers, and welcome to the review of the Tokyo Marui USP.40 Smith & Wesson Automatic Electric Pistol. My name is Gage, and it is my intention to give you all the points you need to know about the CSF gun to make an informed decision if you are intending to purchase this item. Let me start by giving you a brief history of the real steel quoted from www.world.guns.ru. Heckler and Koch started the development of a new universal self-loading pistol, or USP in short, in mid-1989. The concept of the new design was to provide a universal weapon for police and military forces, available in a variety of versions and sizes. The target market for this new weapon was apparently the USA, as the first version of the pistol, which appeared in 1993, was chambered for a new American cartridge, the .40 Smith & Wesson. A 9mm version appeared a little later, and in 1995 the slightly modified 9mm USP pistol was adopted by the German Army as its new service pistol under the designation P8. Upon unboxing the USP for the first time, you will find the following. An unjamming rod, instruction manuals, paper targets, a small bag of BBs, an under rail mount, a red barrel plug, and the USP .40 Smith & Wesson by Tokyo Marui. Upon picking up the USP for the first time, the first impression is that the pistol is nice and solid. No creaks, groans or rattles come from the hardy plastic polymer shell, nor do any internal parts move loosely around. The slight sharpness to the grip provides slight discomfort, but reassures you that under no circumstance will the gun move freely unless you command it so. The raised points give sufficient circulation between the palm of your hand and the back of the grip, reducing the build-up of sweat. The selector switch is quite rigid, making it slightly difficult to alter its position. This is a positive feature of the gun, as other airsoft guns with loose selector switches do not work in an airsoft player's favour. The protruded, oversized switch is easy to switch down, as the user's thumb can rest on the switch and move it down from safe to semi, and finally to auto. Switching back up is more difficult as the user must hook their thumb underneath the switch and press up. Left-handed users will have to switch their thumb from the right side of the pistol to the left side in order to switch positions down. To flick the switch up requires a tricky jumble of the gun as you must lose full grip with the gun to alter the state of the selector switch. The magazine catch is relatively unique on the USP. Most pistol users associate the magazine release with a button pressed into the gun on the left hand side. This magazine release, however, is a latch that is pressed down. It is mounted directly beneath and behind the trigger guard. This mag release takes a bit of getting used to, although it is ambidextrous. As a right handed user with slightly smaller hands, I find it difficult to operate the latch with anything but the middle finger of my right hand. An individual with larger hands and a longer thumb will most likely be able to hit the mag release without shifting their grip. Operating the latch with my thumb on the supporting hand is easy, but causes the magazine to slide out partially as it hits the palm of my hand. I then must physically pull out the magazine, hence the preference to operate this mechanism with my shooting hand. To remove the top slide, all the user must simply do is pull back the hammer and pull the slide up from the back. Disassembling an AEP is not as remarkable as disassembling a gas-operated pistol. All you'll simply notice on the left-hand side of the gun is a hop-up dial and a latch for releasing the battery once inserted. Hop-up adjustment is much easier on an AEP compared to a gas blowback pistol. With a gas blowback pistol, usually the gun has to be disassembled partially, the hop-up adjusted, reassembled and then test fired. All the user must simply do here is wind the wheel align the shot, pull the trigger and see how the BB travels and adjust the hop up accordingly. The slide is plastic, however you can purchase an aftermarket metal slide to replace this with. Placing the slide back onto the gun is as easy as aligning the notches on the front, placing it onto the lower frame of the body and pressing down on the gun. It'll simply click into place. You'll notice the hammer move position briefly, but once it's clicked, it's solid. The gun features trademarks found on the genuine item. The left hand side of the gun is adorned with the authentic markings, however the right hand side is littered with mentions of Tokyo Marui. As an AEP owner, the only downside is the limitation of the battery. The one on the left is one I picked up second hand, 
it was originally packaged with the Sima Glock 18C. The battery here is a 7.4 volt 500 mAh LiPo from eagle6.co.uk. The design of the battery allows it to be used without any modification to the AEP. Extra magazines and accessories are also available for the USP AEP. The magazines are full metal and hold 30 rounds. You can purchase these from www.ehobbyasia.com. I got the flashlight through a bulk order on my local Airsoft forum. This is a Spartan Doctrine 110mm by 30mm Delta IV silencer and the authentic Tokyo Marui rail adapter for the USB. This reflex sight was already in my possession, but you can pick one up from dealextreme.com. Fixing these accessories is easy. Here's the rail adapter and silencer. Under rail adapter. An added flashlight. All those parts put together make for one very scary looking pistol. It not only looks the part, but is deadly accurate, considering it's a low powered AEP. The target you can see in front of you is at a distance of 34 meters. The AEP managed to hit the target consistently with all 30 rounds. I hope you have found this video review helpful or useful in some other way. If you could please leave a comment and rate below, as this is my first video review and any compliments or criticism is welcomed. Thank you very much for your time.